Hello, Bar You Nation. Gabe just cut Nick off, loving it. Nick didn't let him get it out. I don't care. <laughs> Guys, we're here today to bring you another George Carlin stand up video. Dude, it's funny because once you start watching something on YouTube, all of, all of a sudden, the suggestions comes up. So I was watching Absolutely. our last video on George Carlin, and then another one came up. And I see right over here it had um, Robin Williams. But you forget, man, that some of these comics were iconic. Like, Comedy Today, it's good, but it's not, like, as big as it used to be where you had the whole, like, Eddie Murphy and Richard Pryor of the world. Oh, what's that other dude's name? Um, Oh, I'm drawing a blank. He, uh... Oh... Oh, Red, was it Red Fox? He was like one of the original stand-up comics yeah. or whatnot. But dude, like, and their older stuff still holds true today because they talk about, I guess everybody always, same things, politics, uh, 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 controversial money, stuff, controversial stuff. Society. And that's why people say, oh, it's never been as bad as it is right now. Go watch, like, you know what I mean? Like, it's, it's it's just life. It's cyclical. It's never been paradise. <laughs> exactly. You know what I mean? Like this stuff kind of stuff happens all the time. It's just when it's happening to you in the moment, it seems like, oh my gosh, this is what we're going through right now. This kind of stuff happens all the time. And I, I, the last one I think that, and I completely forgot about this. He was talking about, I want you to find this one, about the uh, the, the the Iraq, um, oh, the, 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 the Iraq war or whatever. And he's like, so they go to the Twin Towers, but somehow we end up invading a country that has nothing to do with it because it was Afghanistan, not Iraq. And they found some dude in a cave. In a cave. You know how he is? He's like, in a cave. <laughs> in a cave. But they can't catch the guys that are right here. You know what I mean? It, down the street. Unsolved crime. 34 victims. News at 11. You know, the... the, the who was the dude that they never caught the... um. Son of Sam? Yeah, not the Son of Sam. Samuel Sam got caught. The other one, the San Francisco dude, the... Uh, so the Zodiac. He's like, oh. they couldn't catch the Zodiac. And this guy was sending them his address. Sending them a, a, a postcards. But we found some dude in a cave. He's, he, I gotta, you gotta watch that one. He's hilarious Let's the way that he one says out before it, man. He spoils the entire thing. Oh, man. This is one I chose just because it's an older one. I think it's like the 1970s or some nonsense. It's from the Dick Cavett show. This guy was a talk show host way back in the day. I was gonna say, who's Dick Cavett? It was like, uh, you know, before Jay Leno, before David Letterman, like back in the um, Johnny Carson days or whatever. So he had his own talk show, had some celebrities on here. And you can see, I mean, you'll see in a second how young George Carlin is. We're going to check this out. Hopefully it's good. Um, there's some other ones that he's done from the past. We'll check those out if you want us to. If you like this one, please don't forget to... Like and subscribe. I would say he's probably going to be reserved because if he's on a talk show, then uh, there's probably some colorful language he's not allowed to use. Well... People can still be funny without the colorful, colorful language. Maybe. Here we go. There aren't many people around who can really make uh, life seem funny at all times, but George Carlin <laughs> seems to. Here's a, a new album, I'm glad to say. George Carlin, FM and AM. But uh, rather than play this for you, I thought it would be better to bring him out here on the stage and let him do that himself. Here is the very funny Mr. George Carlin. <laughs> That is a young George Carlin. Holy oh, wow. cow. Thank you. Hi. How you doing? Sound like you feel good. I'm in a new place here. I have to take a moment. You know, I've never stood here before. I just wanted to get used to it for a moment. It's nice and small and intimate. How are you anyway? Uh, on a different talk show, uh, a host asked me, well, I don't mean at night necessarily. There are lots of them and some of them are local and there are many, many. Uh, and the question is something, usually goes something like this. Uh, what do you think about the dope problem? And I say, definitely, I feel we have too many dopes. You know? <laughs> well, it's true if, if you count everybody. If you count everyone, it's, it's kind of true because we're all sort of dopey. I mean, being a human is really no big thing. We're just, you know, kind of... Dopey, walking around, how are you, Phil? You know, got any lettuce? There's really nothing, got all sunburn on one side last weekend. You know, it's, there's nothing really big. Uh, and that's why there's this drug problem. 
uh, that they call it this drug problem because we're just folks, you know, and uh, all these drugs are available. <laughs> and they train us how to use them even when you stop and think about it. I mean, every, don't you remember that phrase, uh, what's the matter, uh, something wrong, why don't you take something for it? Hey, give him something for that. Must be something he can take for that. Sure. Go see the doctor. He'll give you something for it. Sure. You ought to be taking something for that. Should I get used to that? They even make it easy to get started with a little orange flavoring in those little tablets for you when you're young. A little orange. Don't like your head? Too orange in the mouth. Yes, there'll be other colors later on. And that, that's the other thing is the... Uh, you don't have to go to the drug company together, you go to the local connection, the drug store. Where'd you hear about the drug problem? Well, a couple of people in the drug store we're talking about. <laughs> you mean they have retail stores for this thing they're afraid of? Oh, yeah, man. Every three or four blocks, big sign. Drugs. <laughs> Hangs perpendicular to the building. You can see it down the block and around the corner. Drugs. <laughs> Open all night, drugs, we deliver drugs, cut rate drugs, it's the biggest word on the sign. Cosmetics, fountain, <laughs> sundries, drugs. <laughs> yeah, if a junkie came here from Mars, he'd really feel okay. <laughs> I'm living near the drugstore. But uh, it's true that almost everybody has some kind of thing they rely on. I mean, even if it's only something you buy at the grocery store, there are things that, uh, what, what I mean, I'd start right at the beginning, George. Uh, the coffee freak. That's part of the drug scene, caffeine. Uh... It's a habit-forming stimulant. Nobody ever bothers about it that much, but there it is, <laughs> that little lift. <laughs> Mrs. Olson never mentions that little lift because probably she's mainlining freeze-dried by now. <laughs> say she'll snort a little at the store if the line's not moving fast enough. No, no, Those no. brown stains on her nose. Oh, God. No. Uh, but there are coffee freaks, and as I say, it's the low end of the speed spectrum. It might sound a little ridiculous, but... Uh, uh, you can't really go after alcohol and nicotine. I mean, those are the two most used drugs, the most abused drugs, among the most dangerous, and yet they're part of the scene. They support government, government supports them, they're okay. But the other stuff, uh, down the block, Phil's kid, they're isolated, you know, trying to isolate groups. I say, talk about it all. The coffee freak in the office, you see him near the urn. He's always, oh, he tries to be in charge of the urn if he can. That way he gets in an hour earlier before everyone else and drops about eight or nine cups before you've even seen him in the morning. <laughs> It's always in a good mood. Hi, how are ya? Hi, good to see ya. Want some coffee? Okay, hey. Have a nice weekend? Good. <laughs> he's always in a good mood until that urn breaks down. Then he's the first guy over. What do you mean, broken man? I wasn't broken yesterday. Look at that red light. He's even now. I turned the point around. I turned the point around again. Never mind, man. I don't want to jump. Never mind. He's got to go down and cop at the luncheonette eventually. <laughs> Give me a gallon of black to go, would you? <laughs> 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 Yeah, and speed is such a wrong word, really, because speed applies to more dangerous things. But things that kept you awake used to have more friendly names. Benzedrine was called Benny's. That sounds like your cousin, Benny. <laughs> There's a great mystique about Benny's. Yeah, a guy in college took a hundred of them and drove to Africa, learned everything in one night, man. <laughs> <laughs> Mom found a little speed in those diet pills. She uh, found they did a little more than help her diet. <laughs> Made her grind her teeth and feel keen. <laughs> Kept her on the phone a lot, too. Hi, March. How are you? Well, anyway. Where are you going, Mom? Shopping at midnight? Well, they're open. Never mind. See you later, man. I was going to... She doesn't even wait for the bus anymore. She's walking to town now. Mom. Oh, God. And the football player. Boy, people were surprised to find out football players were taking amphetamines. And when being up for the game used to be a kind of an emotional process. Now, man. Hey, you up for the game? Been up all week, man. <laughs> How did you not get canceled, bro? <laughs> you did the same thing. This is before the Tip of Gold days. There's a longer part on the end to see it. Uh, there's a thing about birth control that I put with this, because uh, it's my theory that most people take drugs to feel good, uh, to feel better. Uh, you don't feel good? Take some. Feel better. A little cup of coffee, cigarette, glass of wine, whatever you're into, it's to feel better. But birth control pills are not taken to feel good. They are taken not to feel bad later on. <laughs> I don't have time to develop that fully, so maybe I can say it from there, if that's okay. And thank you very much. See you at the panel. Yay!
message from our local stations. We'll be back. Oh my gosh. You got Richard Pryor right there. Oh man. Dude. I think, and again, it's so funny. First of all, how did he not get canceled, dude? Like, well, you gotta wonder, like, the producers of that TV show, they're like, this guy's gonna be talking about drugs the entire time? And not just that. You gotta uh, go back and understand, like, I don't know if you saw the the recent Netflix um, miniseries. Oh, I forget the name about it. But it's basically about the DuPont family, the people that started the opioid epidemic yeah, in America. Yeah, I haven't seen it. And with the painting, oh, it's, it's insane. But these people are some of the biggest lobbyists. And to his point, they're the legal drug dealers, right? So they make sure that, hey, we're going to get people, and they train people how to get hooked. And that's what led into this whole issue we have now with fentanyl. Because people, you know, they got hooked on those opioids and then the opioid epidemic havoc. And then when they couldn't get the opioids, then they started getting the synthetic, you know, uh, um, what do you call it, uh, uh, fentanyl. But, dude, it's like, again, this has been going on for a very long time. That's why people are like, oh, yeah, um, it's the worst time ever right now. No, guys, think of, go back and do your history. I'm, I'm something of a historian. I love the history. And the world is cyclical. You see things happen all the time. And, I mean, what's gone on right now has gone on in the past. And from pandemics to stock market up, down, housing bubble crashes, this, all this stuff, drugs, you know what I mean? The war on drugs in the 80s. I remember something funny that he said. And I remember one of the things I never understood when I was in school, mind you. This is a kid coming from the Caribbean, right? Born in another country. Don't understand the language yet or whatever. One of the very first assemblies at school, I can remember. Elementary school, Nick. Elementary. I'm barely on it. Maybe I was in fourth grade, right? Nine, ten years old when I came over. And they're like, we're watching a video and this is what crack looks like. And they're on a spoon or whatever, like there. You did you did you do the dare program? I know I'm a few years older. I remember but the crack video, but yes. And I'm like dare, and I'm like watching this at school, and I'm trying to explain to my mom when I go home, who speaks no English. They're teaching me how to do drugs at school. She's like, what? You know what I mean? Like oh, they show, the video showing you the needles, and this is what crack looks like, and this is what I was like, like just by introducing that video, all you're doing is training them how to do it. I was like, it was any. That's the first person I've ever heard articulate that like right now right we do the in, in fifth grade the 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 human growth and development and i'm in there thinking to myself every time how many of these kids are we now putting that idea into that i really don't want to and i'm like oh they you know you got to show the video or whatnot and they talk about yeah. stds and stuff like that and it's like oh like you just open a pandora's box by it but See, I think of it differently. You got to inform because these kids are going to find out. You'd rather them find out from a reputable source than some goofball down the street. Right. Um, but I, I do believe at the right time, at the right age, you have to educate people on the good and the bad so that they know that when they're faced with that situation, like, oh, no, I was already told about what this stuff and the effects of it. And you can sit there and say, well, maybe my parents are lying to me, you know, this or that. But. All you got to do is a simple Google search to figure out we're not lying when it comes to the, the right. dangerous effects of being taking drugs and being right. addicted to drugs and all that kind of stuff. No, for sure. For sure. For sure. And again, I just I, I just wonder, because here's the thing. Those producers on that show ha have sponsors. Right. And all those sponsors, like when you go on there. I wonder if there's a signal like, cut him off, cut him off, cut him off. Because he goes on a lot of these shows or whatever. He talks about the government. He talks about the, the big pharma, alcohol, tobacco industry. Think about that. The alcohol and tobacco, the two, he's right, two of the biggest drugs. Those are both technically drugs, but they're legal drugs. And he's talking about how dangerous they are and, and this, this, and that. And I'm like, I'm just like, 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 like. I wonder if the 70s was a more, because you're coming out of the 60s. I wonder if the 70s was more of a laid back time. But then I remember like the whole controversy with Jim Morrison, The Doors where he has uh, Come On Baby Light My Fire, that song, he's performing it on a show because it was a huge song, but they said, you have a line there that says, um, you make me high or let's get high. I forget what the high, yeah, there's yeah. a high line in there. And they said, you can't say that. What do you mean I can't say it? It's my song. We want you to perform, but you can't say that part. It's going, right. it's just inappropriate. Or right, 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 right. You can't say it. He said, okay, I won't say it. So he's doing the performance and he goes with the camera, hi, <laughs> and maybe that was just in the Val Kilmer movie. And maybe it was that, that dramatic in real life. But yeah, it was hilarious. Like, we just told this guy, he told us what he was going to do, and now he accentuates it. Like, yeah. And that was in the 60s, I want to say. So maybe the 70s was more of a laid-back time. 
Maybe, man, because I'm just shocked. And maybe for all we know, that, you know, because I know that he was performing for a long time. Maybe as he started, to, what this is what this guy's going to say? Nope, 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 canceled. And they started not putting him on shows because he was around for a very long time. I mean, again, I remember being here in the 2000s. I think it was like early 2000s. And he was still performing in, you know, Vegas or whatever. He would do shows here and there. Uh, But, man, very, very funny dude. Very controversial dude. I would think... He is, I will say this, he's probably the gutsiest comedian because there are no off top. They, they, him and David Chappelle. Have you ever seen David Chappelle stand up? Yeah. He doesn't care, bro. He attacks everybody. And the Chappelle show was absolutely comic genius because he understood you got to be able to laugh at yourself. You got to be able to laugh at the nonsense. You got to be able to laugh at the, the, the serious stuff. And to the Dick Cavett, he says, you know, many, very few people can make this serious world funny. You know what I'm saying? And you have to have the guts to approach those and broach those subjects or whatnot. And I would think those are two of the most controversial comedians, Dave Chappelle, in our time. And I'm sure in his time, he had to be controversial. Gotta, but there's no way he's talking about that kind of stuff on I gotta TV. listen to that album and see what he has on there because you know it's uncut. If you like our reaction, please don't forget to like and subscribe. We have some other George Carlin reactions on the channel. Check those out. And until next time. We know all things.